SUNY Oswego is home to the Oswego Lakers, a constellation of 24 intercollegiate varsity sports teams that produce outstanding student athletes competing at the NCAA Division III level. Founder Edward Austin Sheldon was a great believer in that both the mind and body need to be nourished. The Oswego Normal School of 1879 included not only laboratories for chemistry, botany, and zoology, but a fully equipped gymnasium as well. Of the new gymnasium, industrial arts instructor Herman Crusey observed, fitted up under the direction of Dr. Lee with every kind of apparatus for healthful exercise in order to give the youthful body the stamina necessary to battle with life and to stem the encroachment of premature weakness and disease. Mary V. Lee headed up the physical culture department in those early years of the school, and her tireless efforts in the area of physical education did not go unnoticed by future generations. During the school's centennial celebration in 1961, Oswego's first athletic and recreational facility was dedicated to Dr. Lee. Today, Lee Hall houses intramurals and recreation, as well as the environmental safety department. The men's basketball team of 1909-1910 was first to grab the spotlight, earning a seemingly improbable invite to the Amateur Athletic Union's prestigious national championship tournament in Chicago after beating regional powerhouse Colgate University. Raising $300, they left the shores of Lake Ontario on March 14, 1910, made it as far as the quarterfinals of the national tournament before falling to St. John's Military School 25 to 24. As the basketball team continued its winning ways and with football and baseball teams to manage, Oswego State Normal School President James Riggs concluded that it was time to find an athletic director. What he found was one of the most endearing characters ever to grace the shores of Lake Ontario. His name was Max Zeal. Hailing from Birmingham, Alabama, Zeal's abundance of energy, coupled with a charming southern drawl, would forever change the landscape of the Oswego sports program. Zeal had an uncanny ability to coach just about any sport imaginable and coach it well. He was also an outstanding instructor, adding first aid, health, and physical education to his growing list of duties. Zeal was also a great innovator. Oswego was among the first to use the zone defense in basketball during the 1920s. Many of the top colleges shied away from playing the little school from central New York for fear of losing against Zeal's defensive prowess. But as passionate as he was about basketball, he was even more so when it came to America's national pastime, baseball. Zeal helped push for the construction of a clay baseball diamond just west of the old Sheldon residence, where his baseball teams, known by many as the Zealmen, would play. As beloved as Zeal was for his tireless efforts and abundant enthusiasm, it was his sense of humor that many people found to be his most endearing quality, as evidenced by this little gem. As the team warmed up in the parking lot before a game, one of the players accidentally threw a ball through the windshield of Coach Zeal's car. When a young catcher reported the news to Zeal, he simply replied, Tell me the guy's name. I didn't know we had a pitcher who could break a windshield. He's our starter today. During his decades in athletics, the man from Alabama became so popular that the gymnasium in Laker Hall, as well as the school's annual basketball tournament, now bear his name. Zeal's successor, Dr. John Glinsky, perhaps summed it up best, noting that he had a very deep love for people. What really attracted you to him was that he was not afraid to help you in any way. Zeal passed away in 1986 at the age of 94 but not before leaving behind an unmatched legacy. The 1960s was a decade of expansion for SUNY Oswego as 29 new buildings were added to the campus grounds. But athletics would hit a few milestones during this 10-year stretch as well. Soccer standout Bob Thole would become Oswego State's first All-American in 1961. An intercollegiate swimming and diving team was added to the sports roster, and years to come would prove to be one of the school's most consistently successful sports teams. 
Gardner Tully Wells acquired an iconic building that helped create a sports byproduct that has become a national powerhouse. As chair of health, physical education, and athletics at the time, Wells had a dream of bringing ice hockey to the college. In 1964, his dream would become a reality when the first puck was dropped at the Romney Fieldhouse. The venue was a bit rustic by today's standards, featuring a chain-link fence instead of plexiglass to protect the spectators, but that didn't stop the crowds from coming. After spending two years as a club sport, the Lakers finished with a 15-4-1 record in its inaugural 1966-67 season. During the 1980s, the team ascended into the national spotlight, winning three straight SUNY Athletic Conference crowns, coupled with six invitations to the NCAA tournament. With the completion of the Campus Center in October 2006, hockey action moved to the heart of the campus. The following spring, with the spirit of Romney still running hot through the veins of the players, the Oswego State Lakers men's ice hockey team capture the school's first NCAA National Championship. When the school opened its doors in 1861, women comprised 90% of the student body. And although the school did field women's basketball teams early, all the women's sports on campus were considered club teams. In 1968, now Professor Pat Russo was a freshman at the school and remembers how female athletes joined intercollegiate athletic teams. I went out for the softball team because I was left-handed and the coach wanted a left-handed catcher to throw out runners. I became the catcher. I was the only catcher on the team for four years. She also joined the swim team her freshman year, even though she didn't know how to swim very well. As a graduate student in 1974, Russo would play on what was then a brand new club hockey team that became the original women's varsity hockey team, which she would later coach. For me, coming to the college was an explosion of possibilities. There's no question that the women were ready to make their mark in Division III sports, but the campus had a lot of work to do. There were no locker rooms, athletic trainers, or weight training available to the women's teams at the time. As with any fledgling program, the Laker women had their share of growing pains. But out of that experience, the women's athletic program created a winning legacy of its own. Susan McWilliams ran her way into the record books, earning all-American recognition in three sports, cross-country, indoor track and field, and outdoor track and field. Swimmer Ann Sarkeesian became the most decorated Laker athlete ever, racking up 11 All-American honors, including a second-place finish in the 100 Butterfly at the 2003 National Championships. And in 2005, the Laker women became the first basketball team since the 1910 men's squad to earn a bid to a national tournament. During this time, the men were earning recognition as well. Oswego State divers Kevin Morgan and Sean Merlin earned six All-America honors each, while teammate Greg Doyle was a three-time All-American. Wrestling also continued to shine, both on the mat and in the classroom, adding several more All-Americans and Scholar All-Americans to its long list of accolades. 31 mat men earned 46 All-America honors in all, and three became NCAA individual champs. More recently, the men's basketball team went to the NCAA tournament in 2011, marked the first time the Lakers had been invited to college basketball's big dance in the 88-year history of the program. Intercollegiate athletics are alive and well on the shores of the Blue Ontario, continuing a tradition that was started 150 years ago by a man who clearly saw the connection between excellence in the classroom and the pursuit of physical fitness.